Hey, what's going on, everybody? Hope you're staying safe. And today, I actually wanted to talk to you about a game called Ember. It's made by Muse Games, which is a small indie uh, game developer in New York. Uh, they're also known for other games like Hamsterdam, also Guns of Icarus, and The Flight of Icarus. So let's hurry up, kick the intro, then we can get back to it. So before we get into the graphics and the gameplay and things like that, just wanted to give a little brief overview on what the game's about. So the game is actually set in a hyper capitalist environment to where even firefighting has become privatized. So no longer is your firefighter service being funded by taxpayer dollars. They're actually being paid by your dollars. When you call them out, when you need their help, when you need their service, They'll come out and provide your service, but they provide it at a fee that you have to pay at the end of it. So it's no different than going to see a doctor or anything like that, uh, at least for us in America. I know there's other situations out in the world, but in America, if you go to the doctor, you're going to pay a bill. Uh, so that kind of takes that and puts it on firefighting as well to now you call the firefighting service. You're going to have to pay that bill. Uh, and it's funny because you are actually fighting against or you're seen as the bad guys by a Canadian group of firefighters who are trying to defeat you so that they can bring back or I guess maintain a socialized version of firefighting, which is, again, speaking in America, what we have now, whereas our taxpayer dollars provide that service for everyone, no matter, you know, no matter what they come out and do, you're not going to get a bill at the end of the day for it. So graphically, this game actually looks really good, even though this game does not try to make it look realistic. Cause like I said, this isn't a real simulation based game. It's more like a fun simulation based game uh, if such a thing exists. But this has more of a cartoony drawing style to it. Uh, looks a lot like the Miis we used to have on the Nintendo Wii series. Uh, I guess we still have them on the Nintendo Switch, sort of for like our avatars and things. But that's the type of art style they're using. Uh, it actually looks really good though. Everything is lighted well, things like that. Uh, I didn't have any issues with how the game looked or how it was presented. Everything was crisp, everything was clean. So that really worked to the dynamic of the game. Cause like I said, it doesn't take itself seriously. And it has a lot of comedic relief sprinkled throughout it. That's good for a few laughs. So it, it definitely uh, works hand in hand with that. Now the controls for this game, the controls are actually good. Uh, you may notice on the gameplay that there is some hiccups or a lot of hesitation. Uh, the reason for that is this is my first endeavor into playing with a mouse and keyboard. Uh, now that Stadia supports 4K play through the browser, uh, I've actually moved away from my Chromecast Ultra and I've just started playing via the browser. And even though that the Switch controller can connect wirelessly to your browser, um, I just wanted to jump into the mouse and keyboard world. I feel like this game wasn't very reliant on a lot of fast paced movement, a lot of fast paced button pressing to where it would be a hard transition. And since this was a game I mostly played alone because none of my other friends have it at this time, uh, I just felt like it'd be a good time to experiment. So if you see hiccups, it's not because of the controls being awkward or anything. It's literally because I'm trying to learn a completely different way to play. Uh, but I have enjoyed it. So the controls for the game are really good. Um, everything is smooth, everything is crisp. The physics for the game is really good, especially when you're throwing customers around because yeah, you can throw customers, but if you throw them a little too far or you drop them a little too far, they will die on you. <laughs> They'll turn into skeletons and you'll, you'll lose that customer. So you don't want that to happen. But the water-based mechanics for putting out the fires and all of your other gadgets you have actually work really well. I didn't have any issues with uh, fires not being able to put out or having any glitching or anything like that, especially when it comes to using the water to maybe carry electricity from one wire to another. They do bring in the aspect of water actually having a conductive property for electricity. So all that type of stuff was really good. And finally, I guess we'll talk about the gameplay. Now the gameplay, like I said, everything, the controls are really good. 
Uh, this is the early access version of the game, so we only had so many places that we could go, or so many levels, I guess, to choose to where you were going in and rescuing people from their homes or their businesses and having to save various individuals. Uh, they also have a couple special missions to where not only are you saving individuals, but you also have a you also have to find a value based item or a special item that's hidden somewhere in the uh, in the house or in the business. And you also have to save that as well if you want to fully complete that board or fully complete that level. They also do a good job of implementing a lot of gadgets. And not only do the gadgets, you know, help you, but you're also able to upgrade those gadgets to give you even increased effects. Uh, whether it's upgrading your water cannon, upgrading like a grappling hook, things like that. All that stuff actually helps you a lot. And it really starts to help in some of the later stages that you can see are marked red. Uh, you have a green, you have a yellow, orange, and red, I believe. And that kind of lets you know how difficult that situation is going to be. And when you get into more of the difficult situations, you definitely want to have more of those advanced gadgets as also having a few upgrades that give them a little bit better perks as well. Not only do you get gadgets, but this game also lets you customize your gear. You can buy those through the store and it's not, it's not real money. So don't worry about that. It's in-game money that you get from saving people, but you're able to buy gear that also gives you benefits to whether it's electricity resistance, whether it's fire resistance, gas resistance, uh, client carry speed, base movement speed, things like that, that actually really helps, especially in those more difficult situations where you might have to put yourself in more of a harm's way and you don't get as penalized from it if you have on some better gear or gear that's more situated to that level. So you get gadgets, you get gear, and it wouldn't be a firefighting game if you couldn't buy trucks and customize your truck. Now. As it stands with the early access game, the only thing you can do with your truck that is of any relevance uh, outside of purely cosmetic is add extra storage space. Um, you're able to, I guess, quote unquote, steal from the customers as you're saving them. You can take anything you want out of the house and put it in the back of your fire truck for extra money. Um, you also get money from the customers if you save their stuff even if it's not a special item you can save anything out of the house you want and if you bring it over to their safe area they will provide you a tip but you do get a little bit more money if you decide to go the more shady route and quote unquote steal from the customer so the only thing you really can do right now is just increase your storage your storage space on your fire truck uh all the rest of the stuff is just cosmetics and you don't actually get any in-game benefits from doing those other than just being able to show off your cool truck when you jump in multiplayer games so all in all i would definitely recommend this game uh if you are a pro stadia member the game is actually 14 dollars, and if you just have stadia in general you're looking at 15 dollars for the early access version of this game uh, it actually comes with quite a bit it took me uh, maybe two or three days to actually complete this game um, but it was a lot a lot of fun i really enjoyed playing this i would recommend anyone out there who wants to give this a try it's definitely worth your money uh, I don't see you being disappointed and I can only imagine what they're going to add to the game. Once we get the full version, there'll be a lot more levels. I'm sure there are a lot more gear, gadgets, uh, more things for your truck. So it's, it's a really fun game because like I said, you get a lot of gadgets, a lot of gear, and you also have the ability to upgrade those to get even additional perks. I'm sure they'll add more of those for the full game. So that's going to wrap up my take on Ember. Like I said, if you haven't played it, please give it a shot. And as always, I hope you guys are staying safe out there. So I'll catch you in the next one. I'm out.